Hey, before I start the review, I just wanted to go ahead and send a shout out to Velotrek. Thank you very much for sending me the Nomad One to do this review. And I want to do something a little different with this video. First of all, a lot of times people say, well, is this bike really for me? I want to start off by saying who this bike is probably best designed for. And to do that, I came out here to Disneyland and I'd like to go in and compare it to the Millennium Falcon here. And the reason being is that this bike is really a very versatile bike. It'll allow you to go on-road and off-road, but has a lot of power for those of you who are kind of power hungry, but yet also has this good range of uh, how much power comes out of the bike. So those of you who are not maybe experienced or prepared for something super torquey, you can actually use pedal one, two, and three for a little more easing into your speed there. Where for those of you who are kind of like speed demons or very aggressive riders, this bike is made to be able to handle that. You can go up to pedal assist five, it's super torquey. A lot of low end, get you up to that 20 mile an hour mark really, really quickly. Now, the other thing you need to know is that I did contact Velotrek to find out, is it possible to do faster than the 20 miles an hour since it's made such, so, such well designed and so much power that uh, it, it seems like such a waste to, if you're limited at 20 miles an hour. And they did say it is allowed to be unlocked to class three, but you do need to contact Velotrek to get that information on how to do it. They wanna make sure, and I really respect this, they wanna make sure that people understand what the rules are and what the ramifications are because the class three bikes are not allowed everywhere. And that's just, this is one way they can make sure that they are keeping people safe on the road. And like I said, if you want to unlock this bike, you can reach out to them, they'll tell you how to do it, and they can beat that 20 miles an hour for those of you who want to really fly and go really fast and go for some really crazy adventures like the way the Manolian Falcon does, you'd be able to do that with this bike here. For those of you who are shorter like me, under 5'5", the seat can go down to accommodate riders as low as 5'1", and as tall as riders as 6'4". So you, again, you have this super large vers versatility. This bike is absolutely amazing. It's been a great bike. It has one of the most comfortable cruiser style bikes that I've actually ridden in a long time. So like the Millennium Falcon, I hope you guys ride and fly safe out there. And I'll see you guys in the review. Okay, so putting together the Velotrek Nomad wasn't actually too difficult. At 72 pounds, it was a little too heavy for me to lift up and out and over the box. So I cut the front of the box and brought the bike out that way. Next, I put up a bike stand so I could elevate the bike and have it held for me without it worrying about falling over. So I could put flat out tire sealant into the front tire and make sure that I didn't get any flats while on our trails out here locally. Next, I put the tire and the rim onto the front fork and then adjusted the neck so I get the handlebars on. The next was to put flat out tire sealant in the back tire as well. Then I put on the screen for the motor controller, tested out the bike's motor to make sure that it was working. Then put on the fender and a headlight, adjusted that as well. Next, I put on the pedals and put on the kickstand. Then took the bike off and checked every nut and bolt I could to make sure that the bike was fully ready for riding tomorrow. So I'm walking up to the Velotrek Nomad 1. This is a 750 watt fat tire bike and it is one of the most torquiest bikes I've actually come across for this style of frame. It's only a 48 volt battery, but it feels like a 52. So whatever they've done to tune in that controller, it puts out a lot. You'll see some of the video footage a little later on me just playing around with just the throttle and holding the bike back and how it just pushes really quick and the, the uh, burnouts that it can actually kind of do here. So let's go ahead and talk about the bike from the front to the back. We're going to go over all the specs here and I want to start with the brakes because we have some really good 180 millimeter 
hydraulic brakes. Now, I don't know the exact brand that we have here, but they are really, really soft. I mean, it's cushiony and so sensitive. They work really good as what you would expect of hydraulic brakes. So that's the first thing. It does come with some really quality parts and be sure to look in the description of this video below for some coupon codes that might be there. Or when you go to the website, be sure to look around to see if they have any because they often do run coupon deals on this. And uh, this company has a couple of bikes. We're going to be reviewing another one a little later. Right now, this is the Nomad. And you'll see that this is a company that's doing things right by coming out with a bike with really decent performance and a great price for the whole package deal on this. Now, one thing you need to know is that you'll see in the installation or the assembly video that it does have a lot more assembly than maybe some of my other bikes have had. But nonetheless, it's because that's how they keep the price down. They need to have some of the parts kind of packaged better so that shipping costs are kept down. And that's why that happens. So, you know, putting it together, it's not difficult to put together. It's just maybe a little more screws than we might be used to on some of the other bikes that we have. Check out the way that this is right into the frame. It has really a nice fit. And because of its step through, very easily approachable. It looks like it does actually have, it doesn't come with it, but it does have mounts that will allow you to put a rack. And the other thing that I need to bring out uh, or bring to your attention is that it does not have an integrated tail light as of the time of this filming. Velatrick has mentioned or said that they will be coming out with an integrated tail light. It might be either in the fender or the rack. I'm not real sure. So depending on when you're watching this video, very shortly, all the models will have integrated tail lights. Continuing on here, we do have hydraulic shocks, which have your preload adjustments and also you have your lockouts if you need that there. So it comes with the fenders. Now these fenders are plastic. Some people would say that they'd rather have metal. Me personally, I like plastic fenders. Two reasons. One, they make very little noise. If it was aluminum, you'd be hearing a tinkling and clanking sound and any little bump you hit, you might be actually hearing that. This makes very little noise. The other thing is, is that it's feather light. It's super, super light. So it doesn't add any, anything. And I mean, it really offenders really just to keep water from splashing up. And it looks like metal from just where I'm standing. So, I don't have a problem with any plastic fenders. They're really good, easy to adjust. And of course they don't make any noise. So that's my thing here. Now, once you install the headlight, this isn't a super bright headlight, but it is very visible. So that's what you want where you can actually be seen. If you want something to actually light up the road in front of you, if you ride a lot at night, I would recommend um, buying a secondary light that's on top here. But for the most part, I never ride at night. This is a perfectly fine light for maybe um, evening if, if it starts to get a little darker where I want to make sure I be seen. Now let's looking a little at the cockpit moving over here. Just want to make sure that you know that these accessories are not included. The water bottle holder we do sell on the ebikeproducts.com website. Attaches universal to anything. So I put it on here because we don't have water cage bosses except for here. Bottle cage bosses. These bottle cage bosses, the problem with these is that it does then prevent you from having the clearance of the step through here. So you'd have to lift your feet up you know, to go over. So I don't necessarily like it having a bottle cage boss here, which I don't need to worry about it because of the, the accessory here. So this is an easy solution for that. I also have a cell phone holder put on here, which is a way that we can track the, the speed against here. And also if you need to go ahead and track your mapping of your direction, that's what it's great for. This little device here is the GPS tracker as far as the speedometer that you see on the overlay on the screen that shows up. The reason why I want to point this out is that it was added on so that any speed that you see is the actual bike being tracked using this device here. So it's not the actual camera bike that we're using. It's actually this bike. So that's the accurate speeds that you are seeing. We do have also really tight cable management other than what's going in here. There is actually another cable tie that they gave. So one thing about Velatrix is I wanna also talk about some of the extra accessories that come with the bike, the way that it's packaged. They do a fantastic job packing everything and you do have to connect this cable here and then you also have to install the screen just by putting these screws in here and then putting the wires together by connecting them at their connection points here. Once those are put together, you can wrap this. Honestly, I forgot to wrap it before I left for today's ride, but it would look just like everything else here, nice and clean with that. But they come with a lot of extra screws. So one thing that you'll notice in the, the box, if you get one of these, is that they have a bunch of these extra screws here, some nuts and bolts that are actually included. I thought I was, I was supposed to install more items, but they just wisely add these extras so that in case 
if you need one, maybe if you strip it or if you they don't have to, you don't have to wait to get a whole bunch shipped out. You already have a couple extra. They actually provide a really nice socket wrench for this specifically because of the way that you have such little clearance here it's very difficult to get most type of tools in here as you can see I have a little bit of rubbing on here because I was using my own tool and then I realized that they provided it the other thing is they have a whole bunch of different colors and I have that shown here on the site as well and these colors are just kind of really cool this is called the mango yellow and as you can see, it's really nice. Now check out this, the way that these swept back handlebars are. It lets you have a very upright position. So you can have a very comfy ride. And on top of that, a really wide saddle. Plus it's comfortable and soft. They don't install the kickstand. It comes with the kickstand and the screws, but it doesn't come installed when you actually pick it up. So you have to do that yourself. And the reason I think they also do that is because if you have it installed and the kickstand is actually coming out here, it can easily be damaged in shipping. And that way you prevent that from happening. Because I've had bikes arrive where I have to bend that back out because of the problem with the kickstand being bent from the shipping. So they've kind of thought some really thing, some really good things through on this as well. Now, I don't know what the controller is, but I do know that this thing puts out, I believe it was like 1200 watts of power at a peak. And that's quite amazing. So you have 750 nominal, which really gets you up to speed really fast. And, you know, putting out that, some of that peak torque into, I think it's like 75 Newton meters of torque. We can actually take a look at the other side of this and the drivetrain that we have and what's another higher end upgrade of this bike over some of the competition is they actually have an eight speed transmission so there's eight cogs in the back there and you have an altus shimano shifter the, for those who don't know altus is one step above the lower end so even though the tourneys are the low ends and then they actually work very adequately a lot of e-bike companies use it Felitric has decided they want to have something that's a little smoother and shifting and that's what you get from the Altus shifter and that's really good too as well as you have a 13 cog gear for your high end which is helping you even at the lower 18 and 19 and even 20 miles an hour you can pedal and be helping the bike along which means that you can get exercise if you really want to help push the bike along and that's very helpful especially when you have 26 inch tires that also helps prevent you from air pedaling now you have your CST BFT 26 by 4 inch fat tires which are really <clears throat> common on the market so they're really good they perform very well a lot of companies use them and uh, you can inflate these up to 30 psi now I have it I have it inflated all the way up to 30 just because I want to get the most efficiency out of my rides and also because we have these hydraulic shocks in the front that have 80, mil 80 millimeters of travel it absorbs all of the bumps that I need to. It rides really smoothly, very nicely. With the seat post here, we have, I think the, the height range is from 5'1 to 6'2. So you have a very approachable bike, even for those that are a little shorter. Uh, that's like me, I'm only 5'5", five five, and it actually would, fits me very well. And even once I'm on the seat, this reach from the front here to the seat with the swept back handlebars, I am riding in absolute cruise comfort. A really nice uh, design of a bike and comfortable ride here. So let's go ahead and also talk about the battery. So this bike does not need the key to turn on and run, but it does need it to go ahead and pop out the battery. So basically stick it in here, turn it, and you'll see that the battery will pop out. And from here, you can just pull it out. Now, the cool thing is because the charging port is right here, you basically can take the battery out and charge it in the house if you want to or in your office or you can leave it on the bike and just basically charge it right here. We have our battery at 14.4 hour but the rated capacity is 13.8. That'll give you the range that you're looking for. Rated energy is 662 watt hours. It is a 48 volt battery so when you do charge it up all the way you should see up to 54 volts. It has a little place that you can just drop in there and as you can see they painted it all the way around so that it just looks so pretty in the way that it's actually made that way so let's close this up and then you just take out the key now you definitely want to make sure that you're snapping it in tight so that will snap the battery and I usually have two hands and making sure that it's completely locked in there the other thing you have here is a battery indicator that's separate from the the screen here so that if you do have the battery outside of the bike you can click here and it'll have uh, your indication of what, what level the battery is estimated to be at it won't be really refined because there's only a couple of different light colors that it'll use but 
that's a good feature to have too because then you can just click it and know it's either at least 75 percent charge or more or if it's almost dead and then you don't have to actually put it back in the bike to find out where it's at let's go ahead and look a little higher here at our cockpit so this here one thing that's a little different than a lot of people may have to get used to is it does have a left side thumb throttle now the benefit to that is that you can actually use trigger shifters and that's one thing I would like to say that with the 8-speed Altus back here and now you have 8-speed trigger shifter here you have the way you change your gears is you actually push up to go to a lower gear and just paddle down so these paddle shifters make it so much easier and you can keep your hand safely over her well if you have something that's on here and you're shifting on some of the other bikes that are normally out there and they use the SIS sure those work well but the thing is if you have to come to a complete stop quickly your hand can slip off because your thumb is not wrapped around so that's what it adds a lot of safety especially if you're doing a lot of off-roading or you're doing a lot of shifting step up and step down very quickly and uh, these paddle shifters I really like it's a, it's a really nice asset to have and of course you have a bell that comes with it as well let's go ahead and talk about how the display works from here what you would do is there you have a power button here by pushing that down the display turns on if you want to turn on the headlight you hold down the up button and the headlight turns on and the display will actually have a backlight turn on as well to turn off the headlight again you just hit it it turns off it does come with a tail light so as you can see the tail light here the only thing is is that you do need to push the button to turn on the tail light on and off so i push it it is on it's midday so it's a little hard to see they do come with reflectors also you can put on a reflector if you don't want to put on that light because if you're not planning to ride at night you have your pedal assist here now at zero you have no throttle once you can go up to pedal assist one, two, three, four, and five at your top, then your throttle does activate. Every pedal assist level affects your throttle. So at pedal assist one, you'll only have a limited of pedal assist one power. I don't know if that's changeable or reprogrammable, but the programming on this is fairly simple. If you hold down both the up and down, it goes into a very simple menu. This is your tire size. It's S-I-Z-E if you look at that. And I'm going through it. I haven't read gone through the manual but you can change the tire size here hitting the power button goes into the next level which is your unit so you can go from miles per hour to kilometers an hour this off maybe 10 minutes before the bike just shuts off and you can also adjust a minute and then your light brightness is also available here and back to the size and that's it then when you want to set it you just push these two together and you're back into your main mode there okay so i'm not lifting anything i'm just going to hit the throttle here and check how much torque is on this hit I mean, I'll use the seat actually to hold me back, but there is so much torque in this. And this, okay, so that's on pedal assist five. I'm going to go ahead and put it down to pedal assist one. So what you'll see is that the amount of torque is directly related to what pedal assist I'm in. So I'm in pedal assist one, and you can see that it actually doesn't have as much there. But I'm not lifting the bike of any sort. It just does that. And this is, I think it's like a 77 pound bike. So let's go ahead and put on to three. Pedal assist three hitting the throttle. And then let's go and put it on five and then you'll see how much more it has. It's incredibly torquey. If you live in a hilly area or you like the off-road style riding, this is the bike that you're really gonna like. It's also super stable. You'll see some of the footage of both John and I riding this bike, the upright position, but also if you were to let go of the handlebars, it would actually keep on going without actually having that much wobble. It's a really stable bike, very well designed. If uh, you have any questions, I'd love to hear your comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.